Hello, I'm Happy X Toy Cat, and a former Minecraft Job Edition world record holder was accused recently of altering their drop rates for blaze rods and ender pearls. This is a fascinating accusation, and although we're not going to talk about this for the obvious drama that can come from it, I mean, a big YouTuber deciding to cheat is a very big deal, but instead, the question to me is why would someone who genuinely is good at the game decide to cheat in 1.16? What changed so much between 1.15 and 1.16 that made them decide to modify their game and the answer is something they've actually answered publicly and you can even see it inside of the proof video of the cheating it is that they do not like the RNG in 1.16 but what makes it so bad that someone would consider cheating that's what I wanted to talk about in today's video so let's do it So the type of speedrun which is in contention right now is Random Seed Glitchless 1.16. 1.16 obviously refers to the version, the never update, anything in that version counts for this run. Glitchless refers to the fact that you can't use exploits or duplication bugs or anything like that. And Random Seed means you cannot pick your seed, instead Minecraft does it for you. And this is an inherently RNG based category, because you can get any of Minecraft's 18 quintillion seeds and it adds a lot of fun to the game because every single time you speedrun you have a different world to do it in. Some seeds don't have a stronghold near spawn. Some don't have any lava easily accessible. Some don't have a fortress that you can get once you do go to the nether. And this means that a lot of runs have to be thrown away because you just don't get the luck that you want. However, anyone else who plays this can tell you that it's kind of fun loading up all these worlds and kind of making the estimation on the fly about whether this will be a good seed or a bad seed. It feels like there's some skill in it, like working out the best of the seeds, even though in reality, it's the game deciding whether you get that one in a trillion uh, chance of having an amazing uh, 12 eye filled portal near you or if you get a garbage seed that just spawns on an island with nothing around you. There's a lot of variance on all sorts of details here and those variant points can really make or break a run but at least it feels like skill trying to make the best of what you get in a seed. I mean a good speed runner can do much better with a bad seed than a bad speed runner can do with a good seed and that's what makes the category feel good and skill based. However once you go to the nether things change in a really substantial way and sadly the nether update which changed so much about the nether made it a significantly more random place in terms of how good a random seeds never is. I mean, to put it simply, there is now a way to get all of your eye offenders inside of the nether within just a few minutes of getting in there, but it requires you to have some good luck in both having a fortress near where you spawn your portal. This is something that's always existed. The only way to get blaze rods, which are required to make eye offenders, which are required to beat Minecraft, is to kill blazes, which only spawn around the fortress. But now there is a second piece of RNG you need in conjunction with that and that is you need piglins to trade to get ender pearls from. Just a reminder for those of you who do follow speedrunning, on the Java edition of the game they can go back to previous versions and so they all speedrun Minecraft Java 1.16.1 which has really good trades with piglins, it has really good opportunities to get ender pearls from them but even with the better luck uh, version you're still really gambling as to whether you can find piglins in the first place and then how many gold trades it would take. I mean you could get the ender pearls you need in your first two trades or you get the ender pearls that you need in your first 200 trades. It is entirely RNG based. On top of the RNG of do you even find piglins close to your spawn, on top of the RNG of do you find a fortress close to your nether portal spawn, on top of the fact that even for all of that you still need to have found gold at some point or you won't be able to trade with those piglins at all. And that is just the new 1.16 RNG. Let's talk about what the randomness was like even before this update because it was kind of brutal already. So blaze rods are required to beat Minecraft and there is only one source of them that exists in the game and there's only ever been one source since you've ever been able to complete Minecraft that is to kill blazes in the game. You need to make a blaze dead and when you make a blaze dead there is a 50-50 chance that you get yourself a blaze rod. You need about 5 or 6 of these because they craft 2 blaze powders and you need about 12 eye offenders on average. So you dear viewer have probably worked out that you need to kill 12 blazes to get those blaze rods because that's how coin flips work. You flip 12 coins and you're going to get six heads, except that doesn't actually work that way. If we assume heads is getting a blaze drop and tails is not getting a blaze drop because it's 50-50, then there is actually a fair probability that you might kill six blazes and get all six heads and then you can leave having killed the minimum number possible. And it's also possible that you kill 12 blazes and don't get six blaze rods. You might think it's a really low chance, but it's actually only a 61% chance of getting at least six heads from 12 
12 coin flips. In fact, even if you kill 18 blazes, the odds of getting uh, six of those to drop blaze rods, the odds of getting six 50-50s right in 18 coin flips is only 95%. There is a 5% chance of you not having blaze rods that you need to beat Minecraft. There is no like, oh, we can just work without them. No, that there is a 5% chance of not having a critical part of the game despite having killed three times as many blazes as someone who has the thing they need to beat the game. That is really brutal to think about that two identical runs on the same seed, one of those people might have to kill more than 10 blazes extra just because of the fact that they got unlucky. And remember, blazes spawn from spawners at a rate of about one to three every 15 to 20 seconds, which means we're talking about minutes being added to the time for something that is 100% outside of your control. This was kind of fine in pre previous versions because sometimes you'd get bad blaze luck and you just have to say, huh, this is just what happened. But then think about what happens when you add in the chance of getting ender pulse too, because killing enderman has the same 50-50 chance. Um, it sounds bad enough that you'd have to kill 24 enderman, but like we know uh, from before, killing 24 enderman only gives you a 61% chance of having 12 ender pearls. 36 kills gives you that same 5% chance of not having them still. And uh, you know, someone else could only kill 12 enderman and get really lucky for all of that. So it already hurts the probabilities required for essential items in Minecraft. You know, these aren't lucky additional items that you can maybe get lucky with. These are things that you need to beat Minecraft locked behind 50-50 RNG. It hurts, it's brutal, it's ended many speed runs, but then add in 1.16.1, the version in question, and add in the bartering, which is even more RNG dependent than those 50-50. A 50-50 has a pretty decent range of outcomes, and it sucks that they're outside of your control, but you know that it's only a minute or two that you're losing when it goes really badly wrong, and you know when it goes really right, you're gonna gain a minute. You know, if it, it feels like a little bit of random on top of the randomness, but it feels like, uh, you know, just the right amount maybe, but then think about 1.16.1, which has much better bartering with piglins than the later 1.16 versions. And even in this version, there is a 20 in 423 chance of getting ender pearls. And even when that comes off lucky and you do get those ender pearls, you get between four and eight. This means that you need anywhere from one to a hundred gold or potentially infinite, but let's just say one to a hundred to keep most outcomes uh, simplified. You need one to a hundred gold to get any number of ender pearls. And then when you do get ender pearls, you get between four and eight. And that can make the difference between having to trade with piglins three times and, you know, between three and 300 or doing it two times between two and 200. The, the random levels here, the fact that you have such wildly different outcomes is something that can annoy anyone. Even if you are the most dedicated speedrunner, uh, speedrunning 12 hours a day, as some people are actively doing for this version, uh, the truth is no matter how good you are playing, a lot of the game is going to come down to this RNG going in your favor. If you come to the nether with just 10 gold in guts and you think, ah, oh, let's see how this goes. If those ender pearls come out, you will have saved so much time getting additional gold and you'll also have saved time on the RNG uh, versus if you have the perfect seed, the perfect run, you bring just the right number of gold that statistically is required to have a 95% chance of getting those ender pearls back, then still there is a chance you don't get what you're looking for. Seriously, if you want to beat Minecraft, you need these ender pearls. This is the fastest way of getting ender pearls and it involves basically playing a roulette table except when you play a roulette table, you can at least bet on black or you can bet on odd numbers or even numbers or you, you can take it into 50-50s at least, which suck, but at least there's something feeling there. Uh, but instead, this is like betting on two numbers off a roulette table and just hoping that it comes up. 1.16.1 has effectively changed a significant part of Minecraft speedrunning from, you know, skill-based looking around and thinking and stuff into let's roll the dice at the casino, let's hope my number comes up and that I win my bet and that's how we'll get it, uh, which effectively effectively means that a lot of the speedrunning leaderboard comes down to simply winning the roulette table nice and early on so they can move on to the rest of the game, which then has the luck involved there. Um, and this means that there is a serious bias towards players who are both good and have a lot of time. If you have a one in 20 chance uh, involved at some point in your run that can seriously add minutes to your time or take away minutes from your time, it means that there is a bias towards players who can plow in the hours a day that it takes to get those good good RNG odds. This is a problem in terms of accessibility and getting new people into speedrunning because the biggest factors are not how fast you can learn various skills uh, in a lot of places, it's how good luck can you get. It's roll the dice over and over again and hope you get two sixes, which isn't a very good message to send by itself, but then also consider if you're a large YouTuber. Again, I don't want to name names or drag anyone through the mud today, that's not what I'm here to do, but imagine you are a large YouTuber, perhaps one of the largest Minecraft YouTubers around, maybe you've got a server or something keeping you busy and lots of uh, 
uh, you know, lo lots of wealth from the millions of views that you've got on this year. And you know what? Honestly, the most fun thing to you does not sound like spending 12 hours a day rolling dice in Minecraft and just hoping they come out good. So imagine that if you want to do a little bit of speedrunning for this new version because your audience knows you for speedrunning, even though it's something you've done a long time ago. And let's say that you just don't want to deal with that. And you know that it's so RNG dependent, but the RNG is not the biggest skill part of the game. You know you have the skill to do this, but you just don't have the time to hope those dice roll correctly every single time. Uh, and now imagine that you could, uh, you know, you're familiar with modding because you make a lot of modded Minecraft videos and you could modify the game code to give yourself just a little boost. Maybe your blaze rods could get a little bit more likely than normal. Not enough that the casual observer would notice, just enough to feel like that all of the bad RNG runs are going to go away. If you just do a little bit of altering to the drop rates of blaze rods and to the trading rates for piglins to make them more consistent, you can effectively reduce the time you have to spend speedrunning Minecraft. You know, you're not you're not cheating the game. You're still having to go through these random odds. Uh, you're still having to get yourself a good seed. But when you do get a good seed, you know that instead of having the chance of all your dreams being ripped away from you, uh, instead of having that, you could just guarantee it wouldn't. And it wouldn't really even be cheating because you're just trying to show viewers the most interesting speedruns. I mean, it's just, it's just a fun little thing for YouTube. You're not going to get a world record. You're not going to alter the game. You just want to have the fun speedruns, not the boring speedruns where RNG means you have to cancel the run. Uh, if you could just alter the roulette table a little bit in your favor, if you could just alter those coin flips a little bit in your favor, it's not even really cheating because you're just trying to eliminate the bad percent of runs so you can show off the good ones to YouTube and so people can actually see your skill, which you do genuinely have. You know, it's, it's not even really cheating. As long as I don't get a world record right, it wouldn't be considered cheating. And because you're doing it in such a minor way, no one's gonna ever, uh, you know, notice this in any given speed run because people get lucky all the time. I mean, why should anyone call out you for getting six blaze rods from 10 blazes when the world record, this 14 minutes and 36 time, got six blaze rods out of the first seven blazes they killed? I mean, it's not even really cheating if you give yourself RNG that's better, but not as good as that. And this is where the psychology thing starts to come in. And uh, in case you're thinking, no, th there's no way it's cheating. You're just looking too much into individual runs. No, this th these odds were gathered across a lot of runs. And you might say, but why would someone who's good at the game actually cheat? And in response to that, you always have to go back to this quote from Carl Jobst, who is a big speedrun drama cover here on YouTube. If anything, having a better understanding of a game makes you even more likely to cheat which is why at the top level, proof standards are so important. So of course it goes about saying that none of this excuses cheating. If you are cheating at a legitimate competition, especially when you are as large and influential as perhaps uh, we all dream of being, uh, the truth is, is that that is a damage to the reputation of the game and every single other speedrun is gonna have a lot of uh, you know people looking their way and thinking that it's fake when they get good RNG legitimately. Because if you don't live stream like perhaps uh, this person did, it is going to be very hard to catch RNG manipulation on a single run. So for people who aren't streaming all of their gameplay, it's going to be very hard to prove if they are cheating with the game code itself versus not. Because most uh, cheats that are caught are by people who don't really know the game so well, who aren't super familiar with it. And uh, that causes the real problem of what happens when someone who's really familiar with the game knows how to cheat it and decides that they might as well because they just want to have good odds. And so yeah, none of this is excusing cheating but it's a clear sign that the game design of Minecraft needs to improve. The fastest way to beat Minecraft should not involve so much luck, as it means two players of different skill levels will not have similar chances. The real odds of winning are still decided by RNG in 1.16, and this is something Minecraft needs to look at in the future. Let's be honest, it's the most sold game of all time. We can't just pretend people aren't speedrunning the game, or there's no reason to speedrun, especially when there's such a large community around it. Instead, Minecraft should be active looking at this community and working out what to do. The one thing we have seen, which is arguably action taken, is that they decided to nerf the drop rates for ender pearls from piglins. They made it about four times less likely to get the number of ender pearls that you need. So now that you, now you might go back to killing endermen, which has about 50-50 odds, but I don't think it's a good sign for the game when you have to go through such contrived randomness-based methods uh, to get the things that you need. Having just one way to get blaze rods and having 
that way be a 50-50 is a brutal downside for the game. Having three ways to get Ender Pearls and two of those ways being entirely random dependent is fundamentally not a good thing for Minecraft. Even if it's good for the casual player, it makes the speedrunning world significantly worse. And that is why they need to seriously look at all the key components for beating the game. You need to get yourself blaze rods, you need to get ender pearls, you need to find the stronghold, you need to kill the dragon, and they need to look at more skill-based methods or even just tools that people can use to help themselves do so by using strategy, skill, and actual, you know, Minecraft ability, as opposed to just playing the casino table and hoping that it goes well. This is one of the most vibrant and interesting communities that exists in Minecraft, and I feel like every single update is just an afterthought, but the fundamental way you beat the game should be a design consideration, at least somewhere in the team. Someone should be saying, wait, did we just make the best way to beat Minecraft uh, based on rolling dice uh, with piglins? And someone should go, yeah. And the other guy should go, yeah, actually, let's let's not do that. Let's make it so that that's an option. And every single update, they're doing this sort of thing. They're adding new pathways to get existing blocks. And it's a fun, great option, but it should be just that. It should never be the primary way. And there should be lots of balance checking in the snapshot of beta phase. When an update comes out for real, it becomes speedrun worthy because there is this assumption that Mojang has actually tested it. And it, one of the things they should be testing is how easily can you beat Minecraft? There are people who let them know it was very easy to trade with piglins all throughout the beta and all throughout the snapshot process and they decided to keep it and then only later did they decide to nerf it but again people just go back to the version where it wasn't nerfed and we have this exact same issue and that is what we need to fix in future there, there's something you can do with the speedrun leaderboards only allow the post nerf version is something you can do but then you're just downgrading every single run basically this is on you Mojang if you are watching this video you need to ensure that there are not such wild RNG swings in every single aspect of Minecraft. If people playing a category of the game with random literally in the title are left, right, and center saying there is too much RNG in a given Minecraft update, maybe that's a sign that you need to work on that for the future. Maybe 1.17 should introduce more skill-based, uh, friendlier alternatives to getting both blaze rods and ender pearls, or at the very least one of those two things, but maybe that's just a dream that I have. All I know is that I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this little bit of a deep dive into speed running and the mechanics behind it and why it is such brutal luck because I only spoke about the piglin bartering by itself. I didn't even go into the full depths that you actually need really good RNG just to get a seat at the casino table to start rolling your dice and hope you beat the game. And um, yeah, personally, I, I think that's not good game design. But let me know if you disagree. Do you think that you actually like uh, seeing the best runs in Minecraft all be decided by really good luck on the randomness or do you like good skill and risk taking to pay off? I'd like to know your opinions, but for now, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here, and if you want to watch uh, something that doesn't involve the RNG from Picklands, I'm going to be playing Legacy Console Edition tonight. I'm going to be speedrunning it for the first time in four years, I think was when I last did this. Uh, my first time doing uh, Village and Pillage, because there's no Never Update back then. So guess what? We're going to be trading for all of our pearls with Village Trading. It's going to be a lot of fun, and it's crazy, because even though there's a 100% guaranteed way for me to get Ender Pearls, it's going to cost me five emeralds each time. I'm going to have to trade it. There's still going to be a lot of randomness of where the village is, how I get the blaze rods, etc. And I'm looking forward to seeing if I can beat the current record, which is 29 minutes and 55 seconds. I mean, we can't, but let's let's give it a try anyway. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Liked it if you liked it, share if you really liked it, and I'll see you all later tonight for that live stream. Goodbye.